Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. In the interest of sustainability, I picked up this Vax 6131 Multivax wet and dry off the street over a year ago, if not longer. It's gotten grimmer as I've left it outside, but uh, let's have a look at it. The motor unit and all is up on top, so there's a couple of clips on each side and you just pull them out and then the top opens up. And that's the motor unit. It's got a little filter in there that's gone I'm pretty grim. Let's have a look at it. It's bone dry though, but it's got some kind of... It might just be rust. I don't know. And there's the um, little thing for the soap. If you put soap solution on, you drop this little sucker down there. Then it's got this bit. So this is where the solution goes if you're using it as a wet and dry. It's got another filter here. Let's unlock that. That comes off. And this one's a bit crusty looking as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steep these in some warm water and see if I can clean them off because I haven't got spares for this. And then I'll show you down below. There's a rubber gasket or, well, not rubber, foam gasket there that's glued on. Down below is the, the bag and the bag on this one, I've got to take the hose off to get to it. Somehow, there it is, twists and clicks. I'm gonna put the hose into. I'm gonna put the hose into a washing machine because it's just got dust all over it. So that'll go through a wash cycle and a washing machine, and then this bag lifts up. It's got this shape here. The bag's empty, but it's a bit gross. It's got various kinds of mold on it, so it's going straight in the bin. So I would be pretty surprised if this was used more than once. And for me to restore it, if I'm gonna call it that, isn't gonna take very much. So I'm just going to go over it with a wet cloth, then a dry cloth, because it's a wet and dry vacuum. You can see it's just it's just got uh, it's just got dirt on it, dust like that, and uh, you can see the dust on the cloth there. Comes straight off. There's nothing too bad about it really. I'd like to get into those corners, although no, I think that's a uh, is that plastic separate top to bottom. It might be two pieces of plastic. It's got a sticker on the side there. I'll peel it off. Oh, bollocks. Let's come off. That looks nasty now. I thought that would peel off in one nice sweep and we'd be nice and tidy, but of course it didn't. And I'm going to have to put acetone on it or something like that now to try and clean it. But uh, yeah, so about well, a year ago I picked this up off the street. I thought it looked pretty good for what it was. That dirt isn't even ingrained, it just comes off with the mildest of washing up liquid and water. There's no pretty, there's no heavy chemicals here or anything to clean this up. This is just the same stuff you'd use on your dishes. I've got a bowl of washing up liquid and water over here. And uh, yeah, this is the same as most of these Vax wet and dries from the 101s up to the one, I think 121s are what I, I had or have a couple of. I might have one left, I don't know. I tend to lend them to people and I don't really want them to come back because I've got so many vacuum cleaners. There's a bit of dirt on the bottom there, just wipes. Yeah, look at that, just comes clean straight away. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but... You can see the dirt on the cloth there. And so for this one, my ambition is not to do a creme de la creme job. I haven't got filters and I'm not going to buy any, I don't think. I haven't got the lance or the, the stick that goes with it. I haven't got that. I haven't got any of the wet equipment. Because I just found it with the hose as, as it was at the start of the video. I put it in underneath the fire, in with the firewood keep it out of the rain for a while and then it's been bugging me so I'm just doing it. I brought it into the garage months ago and now I'm finally doing something with it. But yeah it's uh, it's just in the name of sustainability like I don't need this stuff I don't need this hassle I could have it was in it was beside a dustbin somewhere communal dustbins somewhere so it wasn't necessarily going it to the bin to the tip but uh, equally it wasn't gonna have anything better in life for it now if you wanted to stop here 
These buckets on wheels are really useful dustbins in workshops. So you could stop, you could stop with that and just use it as a, a workshop dustbin or for keeping scraps of timber or whatever in. But uh, I happen to have some reusable bags from these vacuum cleaners. So I'm gonna put one of those in it. Give the filters a wash and see if that makes any difference. Let them dry out and it should just work. Those filters are designed to have water on them actually because they're wet and dry filters. You run it without the bag and you can use it to just to vacuum up as it is. It'll vacuum up spills. So it's pretty pretty handy machine to have around. But it doesn't, it has a carpet washing system, but I don't, like I said, I don't, I didn't have any of that. And I don't know, I presume you can buy everything for it. But, uh, it's as clean as that's going to get. Five wheels, just for the fun of it. And if you're wondering what those things are for, that's so you can plant your accessories around the rim when you're not using them. Let's do this middle bit. Yeah, so what's the point in this? I, I really don't know, like... One person can't keep everything out of landfill, you know, but uh, what I can do is if I put videos up on how to change the filter or how to resurrect a vacuum cleaner, because if the motor is working, there can be very little in them to give them a clean down and check for problems, you know, then you've got to work in wet and dry for cleaning up spills or that kind of thing. And people might get the inspiration or the inclination or the confidence to do this kind of thing themselves. And that would be cool because I know from the videos I've put up, I found out recently, I've put up over a thousand videos on YouTube and a lot of them are nonsense, smashing washing machines, there's got to be over a hundred of those, but there's got to be a few there getting some pretty good feedback about, you know, you helped me fix my van or you gave me the confidence to at least investigate what was wrong with my van. I've put some van repair videos up, likewise for washing machines and vacuum cleaners and if there's anything that comes up that I want to fix, you know, if anything breaks at home or whatever, I try to make a video of it because at the very simplest level, whenever you're taking something apart, when you're trying to put it back together, if you can't remember what you're putting back together, if you can't remember how it came apart, the video will help. You can take photos, photos are good, but watching, if you've got a close up of how something clicks or snaps or twists or whatever, uh, on Dyson vacuum cleaners, for instance, putting the uh, spring clips back on that, that uh, open the canister base, if that makes any sense to you. Have a look at my Dyson videos, it will make sense. But if you take them apart for cleaning, they're a nightmare to get back in, especially if you haven't got a notion what way to do it. And a video is just so simple as a way of checking. It really just shows you how to do it in a couple of seconds. And granted, you might have to wade through a 25 minute video, but you know, you can fast forward through all of the stuff you're not interested in. Nobody owes you anything on the internet. It's the best system in the world for repairing things, you know. You've got to do a bit of discovery for yourself, but once you've figured out what you're talking about, you just fast forward to where you are and watch a video, do a bit of research and then have a go. And with stuff like this, if you found it on the street, you really just don't care. Does it matter at all if I break this? If I decide that it's not worth fixing it? You know? Even if you've paid a few quid, if I paid a fiver for it, fiver, fiver's a lot of money, I guess. You don't want to lose a fiver, but if you break it, it's not the end of the world. Now I've noticed something there. This rubber sleeve should be attached to the body of the machine. That's the anti-kink sleeve. Let's ease this cable off here. So that sleeve should be in that hole there, holding it together. So for the cable, what I like to do is get the damp cloth and just hold it in one hand and draw the cable through it with the other or whatever way it is. And just go up and down a few times, depending on how dirty it is. Vacuum cleaner cables especially spend their days dragging along the earth, along the ground. See that colour's coming off there on the cloth. 
kind of looks a bit like tobacco staining, but could be, I guess. Yeah, so I do this and then I'll give it a dry again as I've been doing with everything else. Now, if I want to get in there, it's qu quite... Well, no, it might not be actually. There might just be a couple of screws to get into that cable clip, so we'll give it a go. I just keep moving around to a clean bit on this cloth. I don't want to keep rinsing it every time. Most, most of this will just be ambient dust from being outdoors in a city. And typically with these things, as you get towards the plug end, they get dirtier because that's the bit that gets used the most. There's a little S clip there to hold the cable to itself whenever you're folding it up. Right, so I will give this plug a wipe and then give it that a dry. Actually, I'll wait for that a minute and start on this here. Now, in under the switches there, it's kind of grimy, so we might be able to clean that. Hadn't intended to, but we we'll to have to take off the handle anyway to get at the to get at that uh, cable end. Kind of makes sense to give them a little rinse out. That water's getting pretty grim. That black thing there is where the um, the cleaning water, the washing water, comes out. There's another filter here on the back, but I'm not going to clean that out. Because I don't want to. Let's give that a quick wipe in there. And there's this shelf here, this little step here. I'd like to give that a clean. It just shows you how dirty things that we use for cleaning can be. Now, depending on your mood and what you want to use these things for, if you find them on the street, if you find something you want, it might be worth investing in a replacement set of hoses. Like I know for a Henry vacuum cleaner, 20 quid will get you a full set of everything for them. I've posted videos on YouTube, quite a few, of how to resurrect Henry's. There's a load of dust over here. You see this whole slot around the outside? This is where the exhaust comes out from the motor. I think some of it comes out there. Does that lift up? Yeah, it snaps up and then comes out. That's your, I think that's your main post motor filter, but I think some of it's in there too, but that's clean enough to me. Snap that shut again. Now let's dry it and then have a look inside. I'll show you one of the tricks that they do to stop us servicing things. I think I think I can see a bit of not foul play, but this kind of non-repairable consumer product itis that seems to be coming over us. If you like this video, tell me about it in the comments. If you don't like it, tell me why not. Tell me if it's helpful to you, tell me if it's not, if there's something you think I should be showing more of. Setting aside my dodgy camera work, I'm obviously not a trained filmmaker. But that doesn't mean we won't get the message across on how to fix something. I'm going to have to feed this thing the whole way back up to the other end. So I'm sliding this all the way up. And take that away. Let's see, there's a screw here. There's no screw on the other side. So let's start with what we can see. Phillips head. That might be enough to get in here. It's still on. Does that lift up or flip out or something? Let's keep the screw aside. How does that come off? I don't know how that comes off, or does it? I don't want to break it, but, well, I don't want to try to break it. It's very difficult to see how you get into anything on this one. What I'd really like to do is get this top piece off. So looking at that label there, I think in here, there's another screw. Yep, under the label, there's a little circle, and if you just cut it off with your screwdriver, there it is. And that's designed like that to make it look look sleeker, but uh, make it more difficult to service and to get at. So that just lifts up and clicks over. Now, is this the same kind of thing that it doesn't really want to come off? It doesn't so much matter here, because these little... little uh, 
switch bodies should just kind of unfold I guess you peel them off and uh, I'm gonna put them in with the filters to give them a wash they should come back a lot cleaner so this is a bit troublesome down here let's get in closer now there's two screws there and they're holding the flex in place and if I could get them out I think we'd be away but this bracket is caught underneath so I'm show you how it, it goes down and it comes up but it doesn't flip out completely it doesn't particularly matter if I break it I don't think I think it has a pair of little feet on it or something so I'm going to try with a hook tool to snag it out but those legs might go oh no that's it right so that one's out and this one a bit difficult there we go just force it up you can see my scrape marks on it there but it's just got a little snap like that so it doesn't really want to come out but uh, well we got there let's give that a wipe down each side there's a bit of smut in there now if I take out this these screws here You'd do better to see what I'm at. I think this is just a retaining plate for this little cable thing. Yep, yeah, so now let's get back up here, snap that in, snap this one back in. Two little feet on it there that have to snap snap in. Like that, hammer it in. Probably not good for it. Right, so that's that protector on there again. Then up on top, let's get something to just give this a wipe off pretty clean uh, there's some dust or something I don't know you don't know where these things have been used like if they've been somewhere they might have had all sorts of nasty stuff vacuumed up through them you just don't know but you know the buttons working okay I don't know what that buttons for so we'll go over to the sink and give the other stuff a wash so we're at the sink these have been steeping now for 20 minutes. Let's start with this one. As long as you don't go too hot on them, too hot water that is, they're normally okay. So a bit of washing up liquid on there. I think that's about it really for this one. This just stops bits getting into the motor. These things, you know, they should be free, really. You should be able to send a stamp to the company that makes vacuum cleaners to get a filter that's, what's that, three inches across, 75 millimeters across. You should be able to send in a few pence for a stamp to get a new one of those, but instead that'll be like three quid or something, and then you'll have to pay for postage and all that nonsense. That's where you wind up anyways. You can just wash it off, that should be okay. They're designed to get wet up to a point on these. So this one, this one is designed to get wet and to stop water getting into the motor. So these things could be used in a toilet or that kind of thing to clean up spills. What are you gonna do? It doesn't it like it doesn't smell as if that is the case, so I'm not particularly worried about it. Some washing up liquid on my brush.
Oh, I've lost the little rubber things. They haven't gone down the drain. I forgot all about them. Okay. Right, so let's try cleaning them out. If that's even possible. I could turn them inside out. Just... They're not too bad, actually. Dirt, I think, is mostly on the outside. And the machine will work fine without these, but it looks a bit better, if that's anything to go by. I don't know if I'm going to do any more than that. That's one. Here's the other. I suspect the black on this is not mold. I suspect it's just dirt from dirty water because what happens is the water gets sucked in and then gets sprayed all around inside. I know that from experience, but that will work just as well dirty, like that kind of dirty, as it will clean. And again, these things, they cost a couple of quid on the internet delivered to your house, or you can get them from a local shop that does repair things, but uh, as long as you don't crush them, they should be fine. So I'll leave those things to dry, and in the meantime, I'll fit those rubbers back onto the switches. So just like with everything else, I'll dry these out with the cloth, but it won't take very much to clean them, to dry them. They came up pretty good, actually. There's, you could probably bleach them if you wanted, but that goes into a world that I don't care about. And then we just ease them back on. Should be an easy job. And put it back together. So, the first one, the red one. I think you need to kind of pop, pop this switch up. I think it's dropped down a little bit. Let's just pop that back up a little bit there. And put these in. Start on one corner and one side. If you can get one side in, you just have to kind of rub it in because it hooks on, if I can see, there's a little step there and it hooks on. I'm going to try the green one first, actually, because I've got more access to it over here. This is obviously not plugged in. In fact, um, I think you can snap these out like that, and that might make it a bit easier. So then you just get it on the whole way around quite quickly and just snap it back down again. Like that. That should do it. And then when the top comes down, you hold it in place. So this one as well should just snap up. There we go. It's got little claws on the sides that grip the plastic, but they won't come out when that other piece of grey plastic's on top. Now, that slides over it without snapping anything. It sounds a lot worse than it is. So that slides over it and this pushes down, snap, and then on this side, we've got to snap this one back in at the bottom. How do we do that? Let's get a hammer. Tappy tap tap, in you go. That goes in, click. Those buttons look a little bit tight. Let's try and pull them up a bit. That action's okay. Yeah, they're both clicking fine, so we'll probably never use the green one because that pumps the solution around, the cleaning solution. And then to finish up, I'm going to put the less rusty screw on top for appearances only, and the more rusty screw on the side, just not that it makes much of a difference. And again. And that's it. There really isn't anything else to it. So I'll wait for the filters to dry and I'll wash that hose and then wait for it to dry as well. And I'm just going to put it into a standard washing machine with some 
regular washing machine powder and some rags workshop rags probably just to agitate it and get the dust out of the cracks you don't have to do that you can just leave it dirty so we'll come back and put it back together i didn't make it before and after but you know that's what it looks like after going through a washing machine it comes out really well it's a good trick this but the only thing was this uh silver bit clattered the glass door quite a lot so maybe maybe disconnect it here which is a bit of a pain but you can just pop in this and this and then that falls off and you can take off this bit so it's tomorrow now and there isn't much more to do with this one take the top off set it aside get this bit here on this filter put it in place take the ring It'll only go on one way because of those little sticky up legs. I'll just twist it into position. Uh, I've got a bag for it actually. I found in my supplies a bag, a reusable one that uh, is washable and reusable. And I have washed it, and that slots in there. It's the same bag. I think it came off a one-two-one. And to lock that in position, I need to fit the hose, which goes in and twists, and that's the rubber seals on the hose there. And then the last bit is in here. There's a little filter to go in there. I think it goes green side down, if I recall correctly. And that is that. 6121. Should I try switching it on? I don't think I've done that yet. It's not right there. Something's not right. I haven't put that thing back in, that's why it's not clicking together. Like that. Like that, let's uh, plug it in and see what happens. Without it. Well, no, there's a bag in it and the filters are in it, so that's okay. go vax 6131 another piece of useless junk saved from the landfill whether or not i get the uh kit for this one i don't know but uh as it stands i'm pretty pleased with that questions or comments leave them below thanks for watching see you later